So last week's video ended with a big blizzard and this is what we woke up to. A fresh blanket of snow over everything. It's, uh, it looks like old man winter's not quite done with us yet, but that's okay. This is gonna melt off. In fact, uh, the temperature's rising and it's supposed to get to like five or six degrees Celsius um, today. So it's gonna probably melt pretty quick. So we're gonna enjoy it while it's here. So it's such a beautiful day. Pete and I are just gonna go for a cruise and relax a little bit and then uh, probably make a campfire and cook up some trout. <laughs> a blast. Carol ordered in a bunch of these handy lids so that'll keep rainwater and um, bark and dirt from getting in the sap if it ever starts flowing. Nothing yet.
is perfect. Could maybe drop it down to What a perfect day. The sun is just setting and the trout is almost done. Fire is incredible. It's so warm. The perfect fire. I think Pete and I will sit out tonight and enjoy it. Nice evening. Looks like there'll be stars out tonight. And the kids are doing well and uh, it's really exciting to hear from them, they are loving their time in Denmark. So this is the trout that um, our friend Brad gave us. And one experience to cook it over the fire and hopefully one day I can do one that we caught. But this has been such a blessing um, just to experience this and I can't imagine what it's gonna taste like. Everything tastes better over a fire and it's something that has really hit me this last week meeting Brad because he came you know with all this knowledge and gave us all this stuff and it kind of made me think about just the community that you build around and learn from each other and uh, so I, I really want to say thank you to him for that and his family for sharing this meal it's important to have a nice strong community of friends and and family that's for sure but this looks like it's almost done I'm just I can't get over today I mean the Sun is just spectacular over there fresh powder Pete and I had a fun day out exploring the trails and I had never been on some of those lakes so just soaking in the last bit of this winter and man you can almost smell in the air spring pretty exciting times. Oh, the smell is insane.
So this is a exciting morning. Um, Pete and I are gonna go out and pick up a um, solar guy. He, he specializes in where to position your solar panels and what will work for us. So as you guys know, we put in the Battleborn batteries last fall and that has been a game changer, no pun intended. Um, and that has just really helped us a lot. But now we just wanna take it to the next um, step and um, get some solar panels up to help those batteries out. Mainly because when we're gone, maybe in the summer or the fall, we want everything to keep charging where I can leave food in the freezer and different things like that. And I don't have to worry about that or have someone constantly coming out and switching out our propanes while we're away. We can just have that peace of mind knowing that the batteries are doing their thing and the solar panels are doing their thing. And uh, man, that's gonna be really, really cool. So let's go pick them up. Every morning before heading across the lake, I just test the ice to make sure nothing changed overnight, but we're still a foot and a half thick. I didn't even go all the way through, so we're good. So we just picked up Dennis and uh, he's going to be following us and we'll head out together. So there's two charge controllers in there. Yeah, yeah, they're big. Just <laughs> plug, plug and play, I guess. Yeah, those are good, yeah. Two 12. So a 24 volt, but it reduces it to 12 for Even this. if it's a cloud day, you could bring in five, 600 watts, like yeah. just, just idle, just, you know, which would run all your little things. Yeah. That, so the uh, kids have been away there, they're in Europe the, for a couple yeah, of weeks. Yeah, I've seen that. That's and our, our solar usage, <laughs> it, we, I think we charged this thing, we ran the Jenny about three days ago. That's it, eh? <laughs> and, oh, and there's big, nothing, you know, we're still at 76%, yeah. so. Yeah. No, you're all set. I, I didn't get Not just solar there. usage, battery usage, but food. Oh, yes, oh, yes. <laughs> We've cut our food bill in oh, absolutely. one third. That's how we can. So we're just measuring the distance between the old generator room and our shop. You want me to come towards you? No, I'm good, I'll just pull it. Okay. We're, we're 200 feet today. Is that doable? And then, uh, and then we're, I'm almost 40, 50 feet, so let's say 250. I'm gonna do a double check again. I didn't measure from the one building here. Maybe about 250. Yeah, I would say all day, yeah. And that's, that's doable. Okay. So we're just measuring down to the sauna. See that uh, anchor in the rock? That gets all year, like uh, pretty good sun. Where's the building? Behind here? Yeah, yeah. straight through. To the through. right of that, that tree that the boat's anchored to. Where are the dog tracks? Go, I can go yeah. yeah. Lando always knows the best yeah, way. That's a hunter? Yeah. Hunter right here. So it's going to be 150? Yeah. Let's go 160. Just yeah. 70 just for play. You need extra. Sure. Yeah. I really like that option. We may have found a spot. Yeah. And then it's kind of just out of everyone's way. Yeah. So you got the 150, 100 Victron. At 24 volts, you could do 2,900 watts of solar. Nice. So those are, that's a, that's a good setup. They're ready to go. Yeah. Very thought for the morning. Thank you. Carol, thank you. Yeah. Thank you so Thanks, much. Guys. Thank you. And uh, we'll see you guys, uh, we'll talk to you shortly. Yeah. Sounds right. good. So Dennis from uh, Sudbury Solar just left. And we took a walk around the property, 
checking out the three main spots that we thought would be the best and we've been keeping an eye out all winter on where the sun hits throughout the winter and I think we've decided on one spot that would work the best it is kind of it's down by the workshop so it's in the workshop area where we parked the barge and everything so I don't think it'll look bad in there it won't interfere with anything else um, and initially that would be the first array and then we could put a second array maybe on the house if we need to and so on so we're going to do it in phases so yeah now he's going to send us a quote for the solar panels i'm looking into some stands which allow us to tilt the panels in the winter we put them almost straight up and down so that they could point south and the snow falls off them in the summer we'd put them almost straight up because the sun comes right over top of us so it's a a learning curve but we're excited to get solar in and uh, get those battleborne batteries charged up constantly which is going to be amazing got a couple of rods in the ice here what a beautiful day you can really feel spring coming on the sun is shining bright blue sky all around uh, just trying for trout we haven't had much time believe it or not to really spend out here jigging um, so we can't give that a fair assessment of how to catch a fish but I have some time this afternoon and I don't think there's a better way I could spend my afternoon than just sitting on the lake here uh, while it's still frozen we don't know how long that's gonna last and uh, I've got a one rod over there with uh, a minnow on it and down at probably 60 feet deep and then I've got a, a spoon on this one and I'm just jigging it up and down and we'll see what happens it's uh i talked to ken he's a local guy here he suggested that you have one hole with a shiner on there and just let it sit you know foot off the bottom and then a little ways away you have another hole and you jig on that one and one or the other might just be what it takes to attract a trout the challenge in this lake and i'm not making an excuse but uh i've spoken to a couple of locals who fish this lake and the one thing that works against the fishermen here is that there is plenty of bait fish in the water. So the trout down here aren't hurting for food. They have plenty of food. So you have to really be um, lucky and kind of sly to attract them to your bait because they, they don't need it. They're just not suffering for food. Plenty of bait fish in this lake. So that's good. It's, for, it's good for the trout population. They're very healthy and large and plentiful but they're hard to catch so we'll just keep trying and you know what any day ice fishing is a good day whether you catch something or not well no fish but a wonderful time nonetheless uh, i'm just gonna pack things up and head her back in and uh we'll try again tomorrow probably hear the wind behind me this is at least the windiest we've ever uh, had it up here at the island the earliest we've ever come here in the spring was the middle of May and so um, we're kind of past the you know where the wind brings in the, the change of weather and everything so crazy wind going on outside but in here we're all snuggled up and warm we've got a nice fire going uh, Lando's all cozy on the couch. I took him out. Normally he wants to go running. I went outside and he ran to the about 20 feet, turned around and came right back. He, he's, he likes to run but not in the middle of a hurricane. Carol's got some delicious food in the oven so we're cozy. We're uh, enjoying our time here and just watching the power of nature as it blows in. I'm calling it the winds of change. It's blowing in uh, spring. Uh, winter's not over yet. We get flashes of snow. They're expecting snow this weekend maybe. 
um, but we know it's on its way out. And so these winds of change are um, ushering in a new season. Yeah, to get bigger containers. Little guys coming up now. These ones. So exciting. Well, that was quite the day. Um, crazy, crazy winds that have finally subsided. So no tree damage uh, from that windstorm, which is great. Uh, we walked around the island, didn't see anything down. So that's good. Um, so we're just looking forward to a nice, quiet evening here at the lake and uh, a good night's sleep. And tomorrow our solar panels arrive. So we're really looking forward to that. But one thing, I'll tell you what, this storm was a great reminder. We were just getting ready to design and install our panels. Uh, winds like what we had today could pick those things up and blow them a mile away. So we're, we got a good reminder to bolt them down and install them very, very carefully because you never know when a big windstorm's coming. So last night, around 2.45, the sound of the ice was just incredible. Something I'd never heard before. It wasn't the typical sound that you would normally hear, like with the cracking. This is more like it sounds like almost it's bubbling underneath. It might be the change that the, the water is doing right now where the cold water is being pushed up and then the warmer water pushed down. So it's interesting. So hopefully that works out that this actually worked and we can hear some of that and I can show you what it sounds like because I was actually laying in bed and heard it all the way in our bedroom. So that's pretty remarkable. But this is another beautiful day sun's just popping up and I just poured some coffee for Pete and I and uh, yeah like we said the solar panels will be coming so start soaking in some of that sun into our batteries absolutely gorgeous I forgot to mention, um, the last few days we've seen some geese fly overhead. Not big groups, but at least, you know, four in a group. That was really exciting. Come on, let's go get coffee. You get some food, I get coffee. about that but you can definitely tell that the ice is uh, ever-changing and there's two parts of the lake that we need to watch and be careful of and uh, even though this is frozen really deep and the channel that melts pretty fast uh, so we're gonna go check that out and uh, probably keep uh, our friends at the marina keep ask them to keep us updated on the channel 
because uh, I know they can have open water. It kind of reverses. They get open water and we're still kind of frozen over here, but there's no way to get back to the mainland. So uh, I'll show you those two points that basically melt off first. But um, yeah, we better get there. I, I think they're showing up any minute now. water all along here and uh, over there and today is a cold day so I could imagine when it, it starts uh, getting a little bit warmer in the week how this will probably open up all the way out here good hey good morning how are you, how are you? good oh these look beautiful yeah yeah wow, well, we're gonna some power yeah and then <laughs> oh a lot of cable <laughs> there's a lot of cable there I'm sure you can try to find something that we could sort of look for. Yeah. Not look that is not looking too good the next couple of days. Oh no. I think they're almost a foot of snow. I, it's crazy. Days, yeah. I'm like, oh. Lando uh, loves it when it has oh, snow. Oh, you like snow, eh, Lando? Hey, you like that, eh? He was so happy to be running again. Oh, sure. Because yesterday he couldn't. He would go out, it's but the wind was just so whipping. Yeah, there's a back, look on the back side here. There's a mirror, there's glass on both oh, sides, here. Right? Nice. So there's solar on both sides. Bifacial panel. Yeah. They gotta be right on and so they don't bounce on each other. Will do. Take care. Really nice of him. I have not uh, mastered backing up yet, but that's something that is uh, I need to practice. But uh, I just love, you know, the community of off-grid and overlanding. Everyone's there to teach you something and help you out when you need a hand. So let's go uh, check on Pete, see how he's doing, and uh, the load going over. take it really slow I'll just drive up and then stop and wait for him and make sure everything's okay and Lando is um, running around having a blast thankful it's a beautiful day and not so windy as yesterday that was a uh, pretty brutal made it successfully across the lake with the solar panels no damage done all is good I'm gonna take another snow dog across and pick up that big roll of cable that uh, he left for us which is about 180 feet of cable to run from where the panels are eventually gonna be into the charge controllers in the new shop we ordered 
uh, what's called a trifecta uh, solar panel stand, which is adjustable and everything. It's, it looks like the proper rig for what we need up here. It's, it's also adjustable this way because we're on rocky ground. We don't have any flat surfaces here. So that kind of allows for that. Um, but they're shipping, they're coming from the East Coast, so they might be 10 days out. So in the meantime, we'll store all this stuff and then uh, hopefully they arrive before the ice melts and we can get them across here and get the solar set up. Even though it's a relatively warm day and definitely a sunny, beautiful day today, it sounds like another weekend, another snowstorm rolling in. <laughs> Hopefully they're wrong. Sometimes the temperature goes up a bit and it changes to rain or something, but um, by the sounds of it right now, a whole whack of snow coming in. But that's spring in Northern Ontario. It comes and goes. Uh, April's just around the corner, so we know the melt is coming soon. Um, in the meantime, over in uh, Europe, the kids uh, have been having a great time and they've got a little update here for you. All right, so while we wait for the guys, we're gonna grab some pulses. Yes. Norwegian hot dogs. It's kind of a thing. It's like you walk into a gas station and of course it's super clean, really nice, and uh, you actually trust the food. We're starved after um, quite a long day of travel. We went to the airport way earlier than we needed to, but it actually worked out that uh, we could at least relax and uh, chill while we were in it. We weren't running through it. We got to see Opa and Oma. Yeah. yeah, and we actually saw our Opa and Oma. They were leaving back home from the wedding. So, yeah, anyways, long story short, we're going to grab some hot dogs because we're really hungry. Whole set time. And we've got a couple hour drive. It's a few hours to Loam from uh, Oslo. It's going to be a fun one. Should be easy. It'll be about half and half. Actually. Loaded Norwegian pulses. What's Cheers. on all these again? I got your Rekka Salat, you got your dried onions, you got your hot dog sauce, your salt. Rekka Salat's what's key, you know, it's the shrimp and whatever else they got on there, but it's stinking amazing in Norwegian. You know? Yummy. Already been eating mine. I did what I've always done. Mustard, ketchup, and a solo. You need that Rekka Salat, I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> The first stop of the trip was to attend the beautiful wedding of their cousin Zach and his new wife Anne in Copenhagen. After the wedding, Caroline decided to stay in Denmark to explore beautiful Copenhagen with family and friends, while Pete and Dan headed to Norway with their cousins to spend a few days in a cabin up in the mountains. All right, 
it, so we pulled into the cabin a little late last night, but uh, got our first morning. We'll get breakfast on and uh, enjoy the day. I think we've got a bit of a road trip planned. We'll see where it takes us because this is a bit of a different area than what I was expecting, but I know that we did pass through here on the Nordic Expedition, but we'll see if we can talk to some locals in town and get some good info because I was not expecting this much snow. I thought maybe we could do some hikes, but we got like five feet of snow and it was snowing last night probably more snow today but yeah beautiful look forward to this little in-between trip with just a bunch of the guys it'll be fun Alright, so we just left the cabin and went for a little drive. We wanted to see if there was anything interesting in the area we could go see. And we ended up at uh, Jotunheim Wegen, which is just this most incredible drive. And it's just absolutely amazing. There's also a nice cafe with a beauty view, so we'll probably head to that on the way back down the mountain. Well, that's quite an insane road. Uh, this is I think it's Highway 51, it's called uh, Jotunheim Vegen here in Norway. Um, beautiful road that would take us to a familiar town of Lome for uh, Dan and I at least who were on the Nordic expedition. Uh, but yeah, Jotunheim National Park is a massive area of wilderness in Norway full of mountains and just majestic views everywhere. Even now we're just at kind of the beginning of the road. Um, but. From December to April, the road's completely closed. Like the, we've got snow banks beside the road here that can be like eight or nine feet tall, easily. And they keep them plowed around uh, this little town area we're coming into, but other than that, I don't think they can maintain them or guarantee the safety of any travelers during those time periods. So it's currently closed, but we did get uh, quite a fun drive and a couple two-wheel rental vehicles, yeah. <laughs> two-wheel drive rentals. We made it uh, pretty far into the hills, I'd say, and. We're gonna check out this uh, little cafe that's up here and see if we can get some nice coffee or something. Crazy. <laughs> such a nice time at the cabin. We got to explore a bit, see some oh, yeah. cool areas of, you know, further north in Norway. And uh, now we're gonna head to our auntie's little apartment or cabin. It's been a beauty trip so far. And uh, absolutely zero planning, basically. You just kind of go with what happens and that's how you have the funnest time. <laughs> Tonight, the boys are on their way to Oslo Fjord Convention Center to meet up with Caroline and about 3,000 young people from around the world. After their conference, they'll be attending the wedding of another cousin before heading home. <laughs> 